Okay, welcome back. All right, today we're going to do something a little different. Once again, it's going to be a very short video just with one program in the uh, ACU. Uh, but this one's a very special one. This is the monitor program. And this is the jumping off point between the computer vision application and your application. Um, you know, the, the computer vision application we've gone through We've stepped through it. We've done uh, the annotation with the select program. Then we did the training. Then we did the debugging uh, with the six cascade analyzer. And now we're at monitor. Uh, something I want you to note is that we've written no code. There's no code that you've done so far. But this program is the jumping off point where you take over. I mean, this is all fun and games, and it's nice to show your friends that you can do this, but you need to put this to work. You need to do something with this, this uh, uh, video. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to do. It's really kind of amazing. I was on Reddit the other day, and I was talking to somebody and uh, describing what I'm about to describe to you, and he said it sounds like magic. And to which I, I replied to him, there is no such thing as magic in the world. But I think you'll agree that it does have, it is kind of impressive the way this works. Okay, so let's begin. This, the monitor program is the part that you would give to your client, you know, when you're done. It's a four camera system. Uh, every, I'm going to call them channels, for lack of a better word. Each channel is completely independent so that you can have uh, a different camera, you can have a different cascade, you can have different settings, record to a different position, you know, it, it's just four completely separate uh, video feeds, and which you can see now. Actually, right now we have, um, I have two cameras for the video itself, and we have four for the monitor, so I have six cameras pointed at me right this moment, which is, yeah, a little bit creepy, but, you know, we'll go on from there. All right, so here's how the jumping off part works. Let's just go in here. Now, now one thing about this, since they're four independent channels, you could have four, you could have one camera with four different classifiers. So you could be looking for four different things at the same time, or you could have four cameras, or you could have uh, four different cascades. Right now we have four cameras, cameras all running one of the hammer, Cascades. I'm not sure which one it is, but that's what we're using for this. All right, now I'm going to show you how complicated this is to connect to your program. You put your mouse over a camera, and after, I don't know, a couple seconds, it brings up the settings. All right, let's move the settings over here. Now you can set the scale factor and the neighbors per channel. Each one, like I said, everything is completely independent. You can record this channel, you give it a name, your connection string stuff, you know, some out, uh, other things. But the important thing here and the way this works is this button called UDP, and that stands for User Datagram, Datagram Protocol. And there, we turned it on. And that's it. It's done. There's no setting IP addresses. There's no telling your computer, telling, telling this program anything about your computer. It just works, and I'm going to explain a little bit about how that happens here. Now, this is uh, extremely flexible. First off, it is now talking to, it can talk to, it's doing it right now, any computer. It can be a PC, it can be an Apple computer, it can be a Linux computer, uh, it can be a, uh, uh, an iPhone, an Android phone, it can be a Raspberry, it can be any computer or any device that has a network stack because UDP is a required part of a network stack. Even if you've probably never heard of UDP, but it does some very amazing things. Another thing that's flexible is that you can have on any machine, you can be writing in any language. It's language independent. It really doesn't care. And you can have like in this situation, we have four different channels. You could have one program on each channel looking for a different thing or dealing with a different thing. This is looking for something, you're dealing with it. You can have uh, uh, one program on each of the four channels. You can have 
two programs on one channel. You can have four, you can have a dozen programs all looking for different things or analyzing things in a different way uh, on the different uh, feeds. Also, let's see. Okay, that's pretty much how flexible it is and how easy it is to use. There's nothing else to do. It's working. Now I'm going to show you what your program has to do because that's quite simple too. All right, let's just bring this up. Okay, this is an actual, this comes with the, uh, uh, the download package. Uh, this is written in C++, but it's the same in any, I've done this in Java. I've done it in C. Um, pretty much that's probably it. Uh, but any language that handles uh, uh, networking will handle a uh, user datagram protocol. It's required. Okay, so let's just look how hard this is. Here is a structure right here that we are going to send to you. And it's sent as it gets, as your program gets a hit. Um, it has the camera number, camera name, and your, your region of interest. Your payload length, if there's a second packet that has information, it will have it, it will show you how long it is. That's generally zero. Uh, early on, I tried to do some other things with it, but the computers wouldn't handle it, so I just dropped that. So really, payload length is meaningless. Level weights, uh, that is the uh, confidence level, what we call a confidence level, and it's reported in all things. So all this information, as it happens, is sent to your program automatically. And what you do with it is really up to you. Now, let's see how easy this is to do. Like I said, this is written in C++, but anything. Okay, so we have, um, we just have the definition. All right, everything I put on the wire in any program, it, it doesn't matter. Anything that goes on the wire is encrypted with AES encryption. This is 128-bit. Uh, some programs will do 256. Uh, bit, but uh, the uh, Android phone I think only does 128 bits. So just to make sure we're compatible with all kind, all, all devices, uh, I made it 128 bit. All right. So this is standard Berkeley socket stuff. Uh, you start up your WSA. Set some parameters here. Create your socket with your datagram and your UDP protocol, and bind it. And, okay, here we're setting non-blocking mode so it doesn't hold up, you know, when it's sending things. And that's it. While true, receive a packet, which would be that structure up above, and length has to be 96, and decrypt it and do stuff with it. That's it. This is called a UDP sync, and it takes that information that's being sent by the monitor program directly into your program through its networking. And that's all there is to it. Now, what you do with it is entirely up to you. You know, you're searching widgets for widgets on an assembly line, or I don't know, I don't care. But this is the way that you get information from your, your video capture system into your program. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you found this useful. And perhaps you stop by our website r2scientific.com and take a look around to the other, uh, some other videos are there. But like I said, up to this point, we've done all the computer vision. I've done all the computer vision and you've written no code. And this is just your jumping off point. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.